Yes, thank you so very much for joining us on yet another exciting episode of the John Mayatri Show. We're glad to have you on the show. Um, today, we're discussing International Literacy Day, and it is also time for grubbing. Time for grubbing with John Mayatri. I have a guest in the studio that we're going to grub together. Okay, on International Literacy Day, um, it was designated by UNESCO in 1967. It's an annual um, awareness day to mark the importance of literacy to all countries and culture. It takes place uh, annually on the 8th of September, and the, the goal is to draw global attention to the status of literacy and lifelong learning, as well as highlight the long, the strong link between um, literacy and the development of individuals um, and nations. Um, this afternoon, I am being joined with... Um, Mr. Taiwo Akirele, he, 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 sorry, Chief Taiwo Akirele. He is a um, senior policy um, uh, official at the International Policy House. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Taiwo Akirele. Good afternoon, Mr. John Mayaki. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so very much, sir. Um, uh, we, we want to uh, say that today set aside to remind the public of the importance of Literacy Day. Um, as a matter of dignity and uh, human rights. Um, we're also aware that you, there was a program you, you coordinated today in Abuja um, being a day to advance the literacy agenda towards a, a more literate and sustainable society. Um, a, a day you guys also celebrated to recognize the many challenges communities face towards increasing their literacy um, level. Um, you, you want to quickly brief us um, what happened today in your program? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Mayaki, and thank you for having me once again. Um, as you rightly stated, today, the 8th of September, uh, is, is earmarked by the United Nations Education and Scientific Cooperation Organization, UNESCO, to recognize you know, the International Literacy Day and celebrated all over the world. And uh, from the analysis and the statistics made available under the UNESCO concept note for this year's celebration, there is a very serious, uh, you know, uh, concern on the number, the rising number of, you know, illiterates all over the world. As we speak, 10%, uh, it has been estimated that about 10% of the world population are not educated. And that has serious implication on the economy. It has serious implication on you know, wealth creation, it has implication on even, you know, industrialization and other, you know, key, key issues that have to do with access to education and, you know, income equality. Hence, um, the United Nations and all United Nations organs, you know, sell, you know, preserve today for everybody in the educational ecosystem, every stakeholder in the educational ecosystem to sit down and review and analyze key issues around the educational sector around the world and see how it concerns us. In Africa, the, the, the numbers are even much more. We are looking at almost 20% in Africa of those who are not formally educated. In Nigeria, the case is even much, much more uh, damning in view of the security situation in parts of the Northwest and parts of the Northeast, which has resulted into, the, into a number of schools being shut down you know, as a result of the activities of kidnappers, bandits, and all those people who don't want formal education in some parts of Nigeria. So today, the Association of Nigerian Authors, which I chair in Abuja, in collaboration with partners, came together and said, you know, invited stakeholders in the educational ecosystem, you know, from the World Bank, members of the House of Representatives, people from the media, you know, women activists, gender activists, we sat down and said, okay, what do we do? How do we find solution to the rising number of out of school children in Nigeria. As of 2020, December 2020, United UNICEF estimated that we have 10.5 million children who are not in school in Nigeria. And when you add this to the already 20 something million people estimated by Policy House as not formally educated, we are looking at almost a million people who are not in any formal form of training or learning, you know, any form of education uh, in Nigeria. In other words, the gap between those who are formally learned and those who are not formally learned is widening. And with, in view of the already worsening worse, worse situation in, in, you know, in, in Nigeria, this has serious implications on our economy. Now, 
Let us look at it more, more critically, Mr. John Mayer. Let, let me be back. Um, let me be back. Um, very sorry, sir. Sh shortly, um, let me quickly say that we want to take a view um, of your today program so that we, we, we can put it into perspective. Okay. Okay. An estimated 73 million people across the world not formally educated, according to the United Nations Education and Scientific Corporation. This amounts to about 10% of the total world population of 7 billion people. With COVID-19 and its variants ravaging the entire globe and its attendant negative impact on the vulnerable, these figures can only expectedly rise. The year 2021 celebration, which is still literally for literacy for a human-centered recovery, bridging the digital divide, is apt for a society that is fast catching up with technology as a center for accelerating learning. Nigeria is not yet ready to be part of the contemporary developments in science and technology and to bridge the digital divide. There is a huge gap between the capital cities and the rural areas where the majority live. It's like during the COVID, we hear some government saying we are doing online learning. It was a total lie. It was just some federal government schools and a few schools in the capitals. In all the villages and other in this country, there was nothing like that. You don't even have power. People can't even afford a computer, not to talk of internet in the rural areas. A government that is serious will design a mechanism for bridging this gap, empowering rural communities, strengthening the children who have no access to the cities by providing them with the basic tools. Sure. Well, can we really say that uh, literacy, fighting the literacy is not about uh, how many schools, how many uh, dropouts, and how many uh, people that can no afford school as it is now due to so many circumstances. It asks us to fight more, fight with our resources, to fight with our mind, to fight with our intellectuality. That is um, the program for today um, in Abuja that is um, organized by the uh, Chief Taiwo Akrele. This year's commemoration being the second in the pandemic era seeks to uh, create more awareness among the people regarding digital literacy. Um, uh, that, that is the video we just watched just now, the program uh, organized by, by um, Abuja Anna. Um, and considering how this pandemic has uh, hampered the learning of children, uh, like Taiwo said, young people and adults, uh, it has widened the gulf of knowledge among citizens. Um, uh, the lines are open. Uh, feel free to join us and uh, make your contribution. Call us and make your contribution. And so there, there is a literacy challenge in Nigeria. Uh, according to UNICEF survey, Nigeria has over 13 million out-of-school children. Um, that is quite that is quite unfortunate, and this alone earns the country the unenviable status as having the highest figure in the world. To to, to put it in clearer perspective uh, and to gain a complete picture of the best state of things, the number of children unable to access education in Nigeria is more than the population of Portugal. Uh, that is quite worrisome. Um, um, uh, it, it, with such alarming figures uh, and the noted link between high literacy figures and uh, uh, political, social, economic instability, the spotlight uh, was beamed on the country as the global um, day, Mark International Literacy Day, um, the, which is Nigeria. This is the second in the pandemic year. Um, the effects of, this, of, this, of the pandemic are, are quite compounding. Um, we're in a dead situation like um, um, the policy analyst um, just uh, mentioned. The, the outbreak of this pandemic and the lockdown imposed so, imposed, um, so far slowed the, the, to, to, to slow the spread of COVID um, halted classroom learning across the country uh, for several months. Schools with required infrastructure migrated learning online with the aid of digital tools. Unfortunately, such schools account for the tiny minority in, um, in the country and um, are, are largely uh, present in the urban, uh, urban cities. For, for the dominant majority of Nigerian children who obtain access to education in public schools, the lockdown meant that learning came 
to complete hot. Mr. Taiwo Akrele, um, kindly um, give us your thought on, on this situation. Okay. So, I, I'm very happy that you have been able to bring a perspective to the, the, the argument that is on the table. The, is the world is already confronted with the number, you know, with the rising number of illiterates across the world. In Africa, the situation is worrisome. In Nigeria, the situation is trending much, much more higher. And in view of the COVID, the COVID affected everybody all over the world. But economically, it, the worst hit population were the informally educated. Those who don't have any skills, those who are not, you know, educated formally, those who don't have any form of... And, and you know, these guys who are not formally educated also have the weakest link in terms of economic opportunities. So the, 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 the COVID pandemic also gravely affected and further divided the already existing gap between those who are formally educated and those who are not formally. So this year, we are looking at what is the implication for the economy? What is the implication for industrialization? What is the implication for small and medium scale enterprise? What is its implication on even purchasing power parity, per capita income, and of course, distribution of wealth among society? So the opportunities are getting, you know, getting, you know, the, 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 the gap is getting more shrinking. And how do we address, how do we address, you know, the, the, vulnerable, the vulnerable in society who don't have access to economic opportunities? So today, we sat down and looked and said, okay, what can the government do to bridge this gap? What can the government do to partner with the private sector? What can the government do to extend education beyond the four walls of the educational system in view of the number of shortings and shutdowns we have witnessed in the northeast and the northwest of Nigeria in recent times? In fact, to give a better perspective, over 2,000 students, people have been kidnapped this year alone. That has serious implications on parents who are already trying to make up their mind to send their children back to school in those affected areas. So you can imagine, you know, the implication of 2,000 children kidnapped between the first and second quarter of 2021. Then when you calculate that in addition to the already 800 schools that were shut down between the last quarter of 2020 and the first and second quarter of 2021, we are looking at almost, you know, another uh, 1.6 million, as estimated by policy out. So, in other words, the estimate that UNICEF had last year, we thought that by this year, things will have been, things will have gotten better. They will start getting people back to school. But you can see that with the 13 million, when you add another 1.6, we are already reaching towards the 15 million mark. And Nigeria has one out of every five kids that are out of school in the world. One is in Nigeria, and that is very, you know, very embarrassing for the largest economy in Africa. So today we start with policymakers, stakeholders in the educational ecosystem, say, okay, how, what is the impact of the alternate school program that has been launched by the Nigerian government in, uh, in January 2021? What is happening to the safe school program that was recently launched by the Nigerian governor's home? How does this impact on security? How does this impact on enrollment? How does this impact on school feeding? <coughs> Excuse me, how does this impact on curriculum? How do we link our curriculum to the new technology, to the, uh, the, the digital age? How do we link, you know, the curriculum to the emerging economies, to artificial intelligence? How do we start growing skills from the one when people are, when children are enrolled in school? Are we still certifying or we are, skill, we are, we are now skill fine? According to Professor Julius Yobere, the world has diversified from certifying to now giving skills to, to, to young people and it has implication on the growth of the economy. So these are some of the issues we looked at today, and we came up with, you know, with a resolution that nobody, everybody in Nigeria should have access to books, should have access to a very good learning environment, and to that extent, we launched the mobile library program in conjunction with our partners to take library reading to the doorstep of even those who are in the farthest part of, of Nigeria, and we call on stakeholders, particularly members of the House of Rep National Assembly, who have been in the way of executing this project, that they should mainstream the mobile library project as part of their constituency project from, from 2020 to and above, so that those who are not in school, yes, you, are, you may not be in school, 
But you still have access to literary truths, you still have access to, book, to books, you have access to documentaries, you have access to science and technology, and there will be mobile teachers that will be moving from village to village, teaching people outside of the four walls of the of, of, of the of, of, of the of the outside of the four walls of the of a normal school environment. So and everybody has keyed in and we are happy that we have successfully launched that program in Abuja today. In the next the next six months, we are looking at reaching out to almost twenty six thousand young people in the FCT alone. And within another 12 months, we are looking at replicating it in the six in the six area councils of Abuja. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so very much, Mr. Yeah. Tower. I'll be back again. The lines are still open. Please feel free to call us. We understand that data puts the number um, of school children still affected within the region of 40 million. Although schools have since resumed, they are yet to recover from the disruption uh, caused by uh, the pandemic and the consequent setback. Um, the situation has deepened Nigeria's education um, inequality, considering that rural poor children who couldn't embrace digital learning during the lockdown um, uh, are not able to cope. The consequence is that they have now further, they are now further behind their urban counterparts who, who, were on, who were able to scale the obstacle of data cost and network fluctuations. Um, and this um, dynamic added further complexities to existing, existing problems of high number of school, of uh, out of school children. Um, and vastly unequal learning outcomes. Um, in, in, in line with other governments across the globe, government will need to invest more in education and other supporting infrastructure to improve access to learning and quality. In, in marking this year International Literacy Day, the Federal Government of Nigeria announced its plan to increase education's budget, uh, budget, uh, budgetary provision mainly to tackle adult illiteracy and out of school children. This, according to the Minister for Education, Mr. Adamu Adamu, um, said uh, the ministry has observed that non-literate parents are more likely to breed out-of-school out children. Um, government said it would confront adult literacy and pay attention to out-of-school children uh, with special focus on women uh, to, to, to achieve literacy. Mr. Tawa Kareli, again, please um, share your thought, especially concerning women. Mr. Adamu, thank you very much. The issue around government expenditure in the educational se sector have been critically appraised. And policy, at Policy House International, we did, a very, we did a very comprehensive analysis, and we came to a conclusion that there has been a lot of spending in the educational system, although as a percentage of the national budget, it's still about 5%. When you juxtapose that with the United UNICEF recommendation that every country should, you know, uh, make at least not less than 26% of the AMA budget for education. Nigeria budget not uh, around 5 to 6% of its budget on, on education. But out of that 5 to 6%, how much do we really spend separate from how much we invest? Nigeria has been spending money in the educational sector, but the investment is significantly lower than the spending. So, and today, in our press statement, we said Nigeria needs to increase and improve its investment in education. One, you need to invest in teacher training, you need to invest, I mean, security has become a major issue now, you need to invest in the security of schools. In the U.S., in Canada, and the UK, they don't joke with security of schools. You could see how schools are fortified because of, you know, anything can happen to these children who are not with their parents. So the government needs to invest in perimeter fencing, in CCTV, in short circuit television, and even, you know, in technology to secure the children while they are in school. I also mentioned the need for increased investment in teacher training. We also need to invest in curriculum review. What are we teaching these children? Is it up-to-date curriculum? Then we should spend less on workshops and seminars. We spend less on people traveling abroad in the name of education. That is not investment. That is spending. And it has no correlation with the quality of, uh, of, of teacher training, the quality of training that has been offered to these children. So the government needs to restructure, restructure the education architecture, architectural system in Nigeria to now focus more and leverage on our existing, existing cap capacity and, of course, improve the capacity for teacher training delivery. Nigeria needs to take its rightful place in attracting even foreign investment in the educational system, like the way Ghana has done. 
Most of the foreign exchange, the foreign remittances Ghana has today is from people, students who want to pay people who are taking money from my bro coming to study in Ghana, in Ghana. So Nigeria needs to revamp and restructure the educational system that it will attract foreign remittances. In addition to the investment in teacher training, investment in school feeding, investment in curriculum review, investment in technology to bridge the digital divide. Then, a significant portion of the educational budget should also be invested in formal and informal training of those who did not have opportunity of going to school while they were younger. You know, so because it has implication on economic opportunities, it has implication on even political participation, it has implication on social integration. So, a significant portion of that budget should be invested in formal education of those who didn't have opportunity of going to school. Get women, our farmers, there needs to be a curriculum to bring them up to speed as to what is happening in the environment, how to write, what is happening in their, in their various sectors, in the agricultural sector, how to plan seed, how to, you know, how to balance your home, you know, accounting and all of that, those basic things. So, but because all of these have implications on how we are formalizing the economy. Today, Nigeria economy is largely informal, and that is why government revenue as a percentage of our GDP is one of the lowest in the world, accounting for just about 6%. So for me, for us in Policy House and of course Association of Nigeria Authors, we are calling on the Nigerian government to, 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 most, to, to refocus its expenditure in the educational system into investment rather than just spending. Because anybody can spend, but you have to be very methodical in investment, yeah. in investing. Yeah. And yeah. you can see the outcome in the next few five years. Like what has happened to Rwanda, what has happened in Botswana, what, are, what is happening in Ghana, in Singapore. These are places that we're all, you know, people, people said we were even better than them 20, 30 years ago. But today, because of their focused investment in the educational sector, focused investment in technology, focused investment in, you know, in key areas that can revamp the economy, you can see that they're already doing well. You see, you, whatever, whatever you plant, that is what you sow. If you don't invest in education, you will reap banditry. You will reap kidnapping. You will reap, you will reap a lot of criminality in the future. And it is still not for Nigeria. It is still not late because we are in 2021 and the world is still going. We still need to cut Britain with our peers. Yes, we might be the biggest economy in Africa, but educational-wise, we might not be the biggest. Our people, more, more and more of our people are falling out of the literacy, literacy uh, uh, paradigm. And that is not good for the, for, for the largest economy in Africa because the more uneducated your population is, the weaker your economy. The weaker your country, the weaker your, even your negotiating skills, because these people are going to be doing business with either foreign or local partners. Understand in the economy, they need to understand the trend in the sector that they are even participating in. So investing in education and bringing people back to the formal setting is not negotiable. So we need to partner with the Nigerian Governance Forum. We need to partner with the Federal Minister of Education, UBEC, all the ecosystem, ed educational ecosystem, particularly the World Bank, the, the UNICEF, Go, everybody has to come together and agree on how to refocus Nigeria educational system in such a way that nobody, no child is left out of a formal educational environment because it has implication for our future. If we are not safe now anywhere in Nigeria because of the activities of kidnappers, activities of banditry, it is because of what we, our policy choices 10 years ago. It's a result of our inability to make some progressive policy choices 20 years ago. And as I said, it's still not late. And that is why we are all stakeholders. We are all called, we are concerned. That's why we, we, we are calling, we, we organize this forum today to aggregate the views of, you know, critical stakeholders in the, in, in the educational industry and the, to say, how do we advise government? How do we help government to refocus? Let us even review government strategy. Is it working? Is it result-oriented? If it's not result-oriented, how do we help government on board with their strategy? How do we help government refocus their investment in the education so that the result can be trickling in, in the next half a decade and, and a decade time? Thank you, John Mark. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so very much. Um, we've seen the international dimension to it. Um, we've seen the national dimension to it on, um, on International Literacy Day. I think we need to consider, we need to localize this discussion. And um, with localizing it, we want to look at the example of Edo State. Okay. In Edo State, um, there's this video of um, 
when you talk of uh, international literacy, they want to talk about library, want to talk about um, facilities and infrastructure. Now, in Edo State, there is this video of um, the library in Edo State, the Edo State Library. That is Edo State Library showing over there. Um, is dilapidated, not just dilapidated. We have no library in Edo State. I understand that um, um, government has said they should pack out of that um, uh, property. That property was produced, uh, was um, uh, initiated by Governor Lucky Benedion. Um, uh, we are told that the governor has directed that the library be relocated from its befitting location on Supply Road to a storeroom um, in the dilapidated Ministry of Education at Yaro uh, or Forestry in Benin City. Um, take a look, take a look. Um, we'll be back, we'll be back shortly um, after this break. Um, Mr. Taiwa Kredi, just hold on, we'll be back shortly uh, after this break. But as you see, as, as you may see so, the governor of Edo State did not relocate his library to state secretariat. Indeed, the governor of Edo State did not tell us the reason why he, he decided to, to relocate the library. Even though the governor, since he became the governor of Edo State since 2016, he never buy one textbook. Government textbook he never buy. English textbook he not buy. History textbook he not buy. No textbook. Where the governor of Edo State died. But where we say library, we say people, students, they come, people, they come, university students, they come, come they read, they don't decide to be relocated to secretariat, Edo State secretariat. Where we say, therefore, they do government work. Government, at the government work, they go on for that place. But I don't know why governor would not decide to do this kind of thing, say, you know, carry Edo people along. This speculation, don't they say, they don't they, they sell government property, say they don't sell it, but we don't know, we never get the evidence to prove and say yes, they don't really sell it. That is why we they call on the governor, Governor Gordon, not back, say, make the address and those people, make the content and those people waiting they want to do for years. Because and those people now vote out, and those people get the right to know what they happen. Yeah, 
Good. As you are all aware that um, we are continuing with the program International Literacy Day and the Grubbing with John Mayaki. Um, I told you this afternoon we are going to be having Jessica Amafe as um, my guest grubber. Um, but again, we just saw a video of um, um, the Bini Library. Um, we are worried. Um, Mr. Yeah. Tawa Kirele, that, that is one issue you are going to address before you go. I um, want to find out. Uh, education in Edo State looks um, terrible now. What is happening to College of Agriculture? Igoraki, we don't know what is happening to College of Agriculture. Igoraki, um, the library, it seems we don't have library again in Edo State. Imagine if the state library can be moved from there and then um, we can't cite anyone anymore in the state. What will happen to libraries? Uh, in the local government areas, we do not also know. So, Mr. Taiwa Kirele, please um, lend your touch to this issue. Hmm. Okay, so for you, know, <clears throat> uh, generally, the library culture has been dwindling in the last 30 years in Nigeria. Um, I mean, remember when we were growing up, there used to be library in each local government headquarter where we used to go read. And uh, do peer review analysis with uh, you know, our peers in, in other secondary schools. That also strengthens our capacity to participate in debate and other literary activities. But just like every other sector in Nigeria, you know, the library system has been dwindling. There has been no investment in revamping the library system. Books are getting outdated, they are not being replaced. Uh, staff are aging entirely, and you know, young people are not being you know, recruited to man the library system across Nigeria. Then, thirdly, I also noticed that uh, there is low penetration of technology in the library system in Nigeria, unlike what is happening in, in other parts of the world, where, you know, children go to library and they have access to e-library, they have access to computers and internet. Within the library system, books are, you know, configured into the, library, into the computer system and you can access it. So generally, across Nigeria, Investment in library system has been very, very low. In fact, it's not emphasized, it's not a priority. And it reminds me of uh, Claude Ake's uh, Democracy and Development in Africa, where he said the issue, why are people arguing that there's no development? That the actual issue was the development in the agenda. This was a question that they asked in 1995, that development was never in the agenda in the first instance. So why are people complaining that there's no, there's no development 30 years after the colonization started in Africa? So for me, there's no agenda to revamp the library system in many parts of Nigeria. So we should not be surprised now that libraries are being relocated, they are being converted into other uses. Um, staffs are aging, they are not being replaced. There's no uh, the introduction of technology. Books are outdated, they are not being replaced. So I'm not surprised that this is also happening in those But it's generally across, it's, 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 these are trends that are witnessed across Nigeria. And that is why we are pioneering mobile library culture in Abuja right now, because you don't necessarily have to be in the library to read. So we are primarily we want everybody to have access to books, irrespective of your location. So those are my thoughts on that. And then I would like states in Nigeria to prioritize investment in the library system, because um, some of us wouldn't have been where we are today if we didn't have access to, to library growing up in those days in the village, where we go and challenge, and you know, challenge ourselves you know, to, you know, recharge our intellectual batteries and uh, peer review our capacity with others before we go into the exam hall. So the library system has, has, has served as a breeding ground for future leaders of this country. It has served as a breeding ground for future, you know, uh, you know, political leaders, scientists, engineers, and lawyers that we have today in, in, in most parts of Nigeria. So we, we cannot emphasize the importance of library. And the uh, government, state government in Nigeria should halt you know, the, the, the dilapidation that is being witnessed in the library system, they should recruit, you know, qualified librarians, they should train them, they should invest in their, in their capacity building, and we should partner with development, on uh, international development of to give us books. We should also partner, the government should also partner with Association of Nigerian Authors, you know, book writers, and all the people in the educational ecosystem to donate books. For example, somebody donated 1,000 books today. In the, in the international literacy day towards the mobile towards the taking up take up of the of the Abuja mobile library program. So these are some of the initiatives and the encouragement and the incentives that are required to jumpstart the library culture once again. Thank you so very much, sir. Um, uh, you are not here with us now. And we are grubbing already. Yeah, I, I, mm. I, I noticed that uh, people are eating and uh, mm. I, 
Meanwhile, I have, I've been left out of the of the grumbling, mm -hmm. so I hope that uh, it will be packaged and uh, sent. My own will be sent to me via via SMS, via SMS, wow. or or possibly via WhatsApp. <laughs> Be yeah, yeah. You see, uh, we are also st we are still worried that. Um, is that is, is Jessica, is Jessica with you? Yes, she's live. Yeah, Jessica is here with us and um, uh -huh. in the studio. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is she eating fish? Is she eating fish or cow? Oh God, God, what <laughs> <laughs> am I eating? Chicken. Elephant. She's eating elephant. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, that is in line with mm. the celebration of the international mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. After you finish mm -hmm. it, you have to go and eat. Yeah. <laughs> She's a shy, she, she's a she's a star in, in terms of education. Mm, she she has led by example. Yeah. She, she has a master. Yeah, she is an, she's an ambassador for women empowerment yeah. and emancipation. Yeah, she has a master in um, Paul Badmin, I think. Master in Paul Badmin, yeah, yeah. That, oh, that, that is, yeah, that that's is good. it. That's yeah, good. And yeah. then we are trying to reduce the gap between the between the, the you know between the male and female mm. education wise. So. Jessica is the model of how women should be treated, how we should invest in our women, and how they should fight for their, for their rights. Yeah. So she's an Amazon on social media, and if she didn't have the right education growing up, mm. she wouldn't have the confidence to even challenge the system, to engage stakeholders on how to bring development to the doorstep of our people, yeah. and also encourage her, and uh, you know, and encourage other women to stand up for their rights as well. Yeah, it's quite... Um, Thank it's you, quite, sir. Mm. Jessica, well... Sir. Well... Don't worry, I will help you. I will eat your own. Don't worry. <laughs> no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, food is cheaper. Food is cheaper in, uh, in, 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 in those states. I understand that the inflation is lower in those states compared to other parts of Nigeria. I'm sure that's why people have access to food security right now. Cheaper? You know? Is food cheaper in those states or in Abuja? In Abuja. I, I think it's in Abuja. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. No, we don't go to the market like that. So I will have to find a way to <laughs> some, life, you yeah. know, market survey of how uh, the, on, the, on the cost of food items these are these what is sustainable in the industry. I go to market every day to, to do my shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 thank you very much for having me. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate. Thank you so very much, sir. I hope we we'll meet again. Thank you so very much, sir. We appreciate, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't come. In spite of fortunate what is happening in Edo State, I understand them. We don't have library in Edo State again. Is it true? <laughs> okay. Mm. That I don't know. Mm. Because the last time I checked, the library that we have mm. is at uh, Sapler Road. Mm -hmm. But with the information that we are hearing, you know, it's just uh, like uh, alleged. Mm. You understand it has not been confirmed. So one cannot really. No, there's a government statement, there's a press, there's a memo. Signed by the Permanent Secretary of Education, mm. that they are moving the library on Supply Road down to the area of Forestry. Okay, maybe they want to move it because that to the Ministry of uh, mm -hmm. education. Education. So education. So let's wait and see what mm. happens next after, mm. after them. This is in 2017, no? it's not today. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was due to the election. What do you want me to say? <laughs> So, Jessica, you're uh, highly welcome to um, Abuja. Thank you. Here, you, you've got um, Kukumba here. Hello, Mr. Kola. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. How are you, sir? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I'm yeah. Oh, you are on to the John Mayaki show. What's your name and where are you calling from? Ah, how are you, sir? I'm very fine. Wonderful. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Are you in Abuja, sir? I'm on my way to Abuja now. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Thank you. When you get to Abuja, <laughs> let us know. Please, I'm taking the remaining one soon. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> but I just want to mm. quickly say something. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, like uh, in the past, mm. that I used to go to the library. Yeah. Uh, it says something like uh, the governments are not buying books in the library. Mm. I think that's why you have ministries, permanent secretaries, you have commissioners of, uh, commissioner of education, the board. So what are the board doing? Is it that uh, there are budgets for ministries every year? Is it that they don't include, they don't know that they are supposed to include uh, the budget for the library in the budget, in the budget mm -hmm. or they they put it on the budget they don't actualize it because that's something that we really need to to find out yes. because those are some of the things that they should be putting in the 
in the education uh, 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 budget yeah. for implementation, yeah. you understand, fighting for implementation so that every year they can update the library. Yeah. So we need to find out more details, what is really mm -hmm. going on. To support what you just said, to support what you just said, there is, we have budgets every year in, year out. Mm -hmm. The question is what has happened to the Ministry of Education's budget in terms of library, new equipped modern libraries in the state, you call it a do state library, then the local governments, when I was young I used to go to the local government library to read, when we leave school in the afternoon we, we branch in the library, we read and then we go back home in the evening. I'm not sure we have that anymore. Unfortunately, I also understand uh, College, College of um, Agriculture Igoraki is nowhere uh, anymore. I understand um, College of Education Ekadolo is nowhere anymore. You are aware of that? Yeah, I'm aware. Mm -hmm. uh, because I used to go to uh, Igoraki mm -hmm. for business. Sometimes I pass through there to uh, Igobazua mm -hmm. and other areas. Having that College of uh, 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 Agriculture there at Igoria, it was very strategic, mm -hmm. so you understand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about when you have that school there, automatically you are creating more cities in the states. Mm -hmm. Development, business, I know a lot of persons that was doing business in that Igoria. You understand? People were trying to, like, people were planning to establish their fast food. You understand? I have a friend now who lives in the UK. That went to College of uh, Agriculture, Igor Ehe. In fact, the last time we spoke, before they closed down the school, he was telling me that he was planning to come and open a fast food there. You understand? So people are already creating, thinking ahead. So closing the school down wasn't a, a, a good idea for me. Because you are killing dreams. People are having dreams. You are killing plans. We shouldn't concentrate more on just the city center. Right now, we should be thinking of expanding. There's no land in GRA anymore. The place is choked up. Mm -hmm. So we'll be thinking of creating more cities outside uh, Benin. Yeah, yeah, I agree with so you. So that people can relocate, yeah. create more uh, modern uh, cities. Modern cities. Yeah. So that's my opinion about this. Uh, but, but Jessica, but that is not the only school um, that is... Um, Presently in Comatos, you are aware that um, School of um, uh, Nursing. You are aware of that? School of Nursing? I'm aware, but I think they said they are working on something. Yeah, but so. the question is do you shut down one school uh, because you, are, you want to build it, you then shut it down so that students can then go home, go and rest? <laughs> you know? Hmm? You don't need to shut down one school mm -hmm. for students to go home, mm -hmm. to go and rest, just like the Tayo Akbata yeah. uh, University, a yeah. the law. It mm. was painful. Mm because uh, I have a lot of friends who went to that school. Eventually, I also got admission into that school before I finally went to Ambassador University, Ekboma. So I was really, really surprised. And uh, for the fact that the school has been closed down for some years now, yeah, yeah. I think it's high time to tell, as in government, reopen mm. the school. Everybody cannot go to College of... Uh, I think there's another one in Abudu. Mm -hmm, yeah. So I think everybody cannot go to... Abudu, we are thinking of uh, having more teachers in the states. So many people are going to retire very soon. And these are places where uh, these uh, teachers are grown. So I think that uh, the government should start thinking on how, on the way forward yeah. about uh, uh, these schools. And, uh, you know, uh, some time ago, we saw uh, lecturers from the, university, uh, the College of Education, now university, I guess, protesting about their unpaid salary. I think that should be also be looked into. Wonderful. You understand? Anybody that has worked deserve his pay. His pay. Mm. You understand? They have family, they have people they take care of. It's not, uh, it's not really good. Mm -hmm. So I think those areas should be looked into. Not just about opening the university. People yeah. should be compensated for a job well done yeah. in the past. That's my opinion. Jessica, there's another school around them. Ibini Motel Plaza, there's one school they call the Center for Community Development. It has been demolished. And, um, you know, in, right there in Benin City. Are you aware? Really? I'm not aware. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's been demolished. So, yeah. with what is going on now, is it that uh, we don't have value for education? That, that it's almost, it's almost uh, <laughs> you want me to say that? <laughs> it's as if we don't have value yeah, for yeah, education. Yeah, yeah, it's quite you unfortunate. Understand? Quite and, unfortunate. Uh, this education is... Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the few things yeah. citizens should benefit yeah. from their government, yeah. you understand, and uh, it's, not a, it's a right, mm -hmm. not a privilege. What, so. what encouragement do you want to, exactly, if I, let me ask you, after your first degree, your first degree was in what? I did po uh, political science. Political science? Yes. Oh, is it that you want to be a politician or what? Uh, the kind of politics I want to play, I think uh, we have not gone to that stage. Because you know me, I'm a very straightforward mm -hmm, person. Mm -hmm. So I don't think uh, I really want to. If I want to really play uh, politics, like to be active, uh, I have a lot of sacrifice to make, you mm. understand? And uh, I think uh, a lot of things, not just our states mm -hmm. particularly, I think generally there is this... Uh, I think there is this orientation that maybe when they go into politics, it, they have a different mindset, yeah. you understand? But I think we can still make a difference. As young people, mm. we should be thinking of correcting the wrongs mm. that our leaders or our forefathers has already imparted on us, yeah. but not going in the same directions yeah. where they are taking in mm. the past. Yeah. So our coming in should make an impact yeah. and should make a difference. That's what I, I agree with you, but... I was more challenged, particularly after your first degree, you went back to second degree, that is your master's. Yes. What, what gave you that push? A, 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 the girl child is known to probably finish first degree, get married, and all of those. You went for your master. What happened? How did you do yeah, that? Mother? Because my mom, my mom is a disciplinarian. Okay. You understand? My mom is a disciplinarian, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom loves education. Mm -hmm. So initially, my mom wanted me to do that master's, but I felt like, no, I don't. I don't need it. Mm. So as time grows on, when I begin to grow and begin to say things for myself, I said, uh, this is what my mom has been saying. Mm. So I need it, you understand? Not just because of politics mm. or but generally to the gay child, you yeah. understand? It's yeah. a challenge yeah. for the gay child because of the society mm. that we look at, mm. we live in. People mm. look down on the gay mm. child mm. and people feel that. And there is this perception people have like about the hours somewhere and somebody was talking. Say, many people don't they go to school. You understand? And I challenge the person. I show the person my result. I said, but I have a BSA and stuff. I said, you are just one of the few person. But it's not <laughs> like that. We have a lot of young girls in Benin who have masters, who have PhD. You understand? So people should just remove that mindset away from them. When you when I, I when I see the uh, vice chancellor of uh, University of Benin, mm. Professor Lilian Salami, I think I want to be like mm. women like that. Mm. You understand? Mm. One day I want to see that I have a, a PhD, which mm. I'm already working on. Wow. And uh, we have a lot of professors in University of Benin, women, young professors. We have doctors mm. in University of Benin. So when I look at them, so it's a big challenge to me. Wonderful. Becoming a better person mm -hmm. in the society. But some of some of your friends are abroad and um, people travel abroad. When you finish school, you want to go abroad, you want to make money. You are thinking, are you, are you thinking of that? I'm not a fan of abroad. Mm. Anyway. I kind of like this country because I have, that, I have that mindset that this country will change. Mm. If we all decide to leave this country, mm. who is going to repair this country? Mm. There's no place like home. People who go abroad, they also come back. Mm. <laughs> they also come back to this country. Everybody will agree with me that this country is sweet, mm. you understand? Mm. Just that things are not going in the way that it should go. That is why we must begin to think straight. Yeah. Everybody must begin to get involved. Mm -hmm. Like what I tell my friends, I say, you can't complain when you don't vote. Your vote counts. Yeah. You can't complain when you don't even have voter's card. You are an adult, you are more than 30, you are telling me that you don't have voter's card. It mm. is wrong. We have so many voter's card that uh, the INEC office, people have refused to collect their voter's card. So I encourage everybody to go and get their voter's card. Mm. Let's make the change. The change that we want is not uh, people from outside. Mm. People who come from the UK to come and uh, correct that uh, change. It's we who are here that will correct that change. I don't see anything wrong with anybody going outside the country to look for uh, greener pasture or to also uh, get more uh, 
degrees. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything wrong, but we must come back home, yeah. we must fall back home to build the society. Wonderful. Um, that, that is, that is um, it's a pleasure having you, Jessica. Jessica. Um, for me, um, there's this um, crisis in Edo State that uh, the governor has been um, elected for the past nine months. Uh, people say it's one year. People, are, people are, a lot of people are complaining. I think before we go, Jessica, we need to advise people to get serious with their life and forget about government job because life has to continue. Government job or no government job, people have to continue their life. I, I understand some people are even uh, quarreling that, oh, oh, the Pastor Ezeyamu who lost election, he promised me this, he promised me that, 200 million. Uh, for me, if somebody lost an election, you, you, you said the person promised you something. Uh, but the pastor didn't promise anybody anything. But what about the person who won? Um, he has not set up a cabinet. And the uh, people are complaining there's, there's hunger in the land. I think we want to advise everybody in Edo State to... To get something doing and be serious uh, with their life don't, and and don't and don't wait for government to employ them yes mm -hmm. uh, i don't think uh to me po uh, politics is not uh is not a job mm -hmm. you understand it's a call to serve mm -hmm. that is what most people don't know for the fact that uh or somebody will just ask you now what do you do for a living you say i'm a politician it's mm -hmm. it's funny to me mm -hmm. you understand you must have an identity mm -hmm. people should begin to uh, 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 second address. Elect people mm -hmm. who have a second address. Mm -hmm. Like the governor of Edo State, whether you like it or not, if you ask him today, being a governor of the state, will tell you that he's a financial expert. <laughs> you understand? So I, I think that as young persons, you must have. Uh, sorry to say, some youths are lazy in quotes. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants a fast money. Mm -hmm. You understand? There's nothing like uh, fast money. Mm -hmm. You, you walk your way towards. Uh, uh, this uh, money. Yeah. So people should begin to learn uh, uh, trade and work. Mm -hmm. There are so many, like my pastor do tell us that uh, problem is money. When you solve problem, you get money. Mm -hmm. You understand? There are so many opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. So as young people, we should look out for those opportunities and take advantage of them mm -hmm. and make money for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Even if you are appointed as a SA or SSA, mm -hmm. After a period of time, nothing lasts forever. No. The position is not forever. Mm -hmm. And this thing will go. Mm -hmm. You understand? Is it that you want to just keep moving from one uh, 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 one place to another? Today, politics A, tomorrow, politics B, just to. I call that stomach infrastructure. We, do, we should have what is called sustainability yeah. in us. You understand? Whether politics or not, I, uh, I supported POI in 2016. In 2020, I supported them. Today, I'm still living well. Wow. I'm still doing well. Not because I have too much, mm -hmm. but because I have a second address. Yeah. I'll be able to, to create something for myself. Uh, so you know, uh, it so seems you're into business, too. You do some business. Yeah. How do you do? I'm into business. Uh, fabrics. Mm -hmm. I sell fabrics. If you're listening to me and you want to buy fabrics... Jessica, oh. you are going to pay for this advert you are doing my show. <laughs> Mama, leave me alone. So I sell fabrics yeah. and uh, I'm into real estate. You oh. have to buy properties in Benin. Hmm. You can inbox me privately. Hmm. You want a land, hmm. secure land. Most people are saying that uh, uh, hmm. when you buy land in Benin, people, community will come and take your land. Come and meet Jessica. Come and buy land from Jessica. Come and buy land from our company, Land Smith Company, hmm. where you have secured properties. Hmm. You don't pay for community development we have phase one we have phase two you can even pay instrumentally so what are we saying so if you you are out there and you feel that you don't even have a job you can partner with us go and work as a, a marketer yeah. bring more clients to mm -hmm. come and buy and uh, take, and take uh, your percentage and take your percentage bring more clients let them buy a uh, uh, land mm -hmm. you can even serve as agents mm -hmm. people start renting uh, uh houses letting houses to people and you also get your percentage so there are so many jobs a lot to do i said materials if you stay abroad you want to buy material from me and you want it made already made for you i will send the dhl they know me ups they know me i send materials abroad for my customers you are going to take some time on this program and do your advert <laughs> thank you so very much for having me on this show um well, this is um all on today's edition of the john Mayaki show um, to come your, come your way again. Don't mind me, a lot of things on my mouth. Yeah, Remember that life is a gift, and every day you live, live to witness life, it's an opportunity for you to do, to, to do something great 
and change your destiny. Take charge. Take care. Bye for now. And the local